show and tell here today. This is my original MGM poster for their aborted release of the Cylon Glances of a Pigeon Picker. It's a very, very rare item. Uh, you see down here at the bottom, uh, MGM Presents. I hope you see that. I remember taking this item in to be framed. Uh, it was a poster framing shop. I was, I was going to get it framed, and the woman working in the shop is a nice little old <laughs> British lady. She unfolded it, she took one look at it, and then looked at me and said, well, that's rather enigmatic, isn't it? Um, it's a little too pricey to get uh, movie posters framed in, uh, uh, in the town where I live, which is San Francisco. So I'm waiting for my next trip to L.A., uh, where it's a lot cheaper to get posters framed there. Uh, anyway, I'm Daniel Kramer, and this is Trailers from Hell, and as you might have guessed, uh, the movie of the day is The Sidelong Glances of a Pigeon Kicker, directed by John Dexter, a very prominent uh, uh, stage director. Uh, and um, this film is available to see, though in a slightly truncated form, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that later. But the crazy story about this thing... Okay, so I'm watching this movie for maybe... This is years ago, maybe for the second time. And there's a party sequence, as many films of that era had a party sequence. I'm watching it, and I'm watching it, and on the left side of the screen, I'm looking at one of the party goers. And I'm looking, and I'm looking really closely, and it's like, is that Sylvester Stallone? And I, of course, I rewound it a couple times, and I was like, it's Sylvester Stallone. Like, and there he was. He was right there. You know, it turns out that he was, uh, he appeared as an extra in this film. Uh, likely around the time he appeared in uh, um, an adult film called uh, The Party at Kitty and Studs. Uh, after Rocky, they, of course, retitled the film The Italian Stallion. Uh, but uh, he was wearing the same outfit that he was wearing in that movie in this party scene. So maybe he was shooting... <laughs> He shot the adult film during the day, the porn, and then at, at night he went uh, and did this little little um, extra work uh, in this party scene for John Dexter for Sidelong Glances of a Pigeon Kicker. Uh, very likely, because, you know, his same outfit, maybe he just liked that outfit, I don't know. Uh, but really, really crazy. It was mind-blowing when I, when I laid eyes on that. Anyway, um, I'm not going to keep you for much longer, but I, uh, I'll just talk about the cast for a bit. S uh, this stars Jordan Christopher, uh, who would, uh, many of you may know for Angel, Angel, Down We Go. He would later appear in films like uh, Star 80 for Bob Fosse. Jill O'Hara, this is her first and last film. She was a, uh, primarily a stage actress. She had uh, scored a hit with a show called Promises, Promises, and she never appeared in another movie after after this one. Robert Walden, uh, from one of my favorite shows, Lou Grant, uh, he plays Rossi on that show. He's, he's one of the reporters. Um, also was in All the President's Men. Uh, Lois Nettleton, William Redfield, he was in One Foot of the Cuckoo's Nest and a number of other movies. Kate Reed, wonderful Canadian actress, uh, Andromeda Strain, she would appear in that film that's the same year as this one. Bonnie Enton, Elaine Stritch, yes, she does appear briefly, but she is in it. Uh, she's also in the party sequence. Imagine a party sequence with Elaine Stritch and Sly Stallone. <laughs> this movie offers it up. Um, so yeah, Elaine Stritch, Mel Bamore, actress and beloved R&B and soul singer. Chris Tabori and Sylvester Stallone. I give you John Dexter's The Sidelong Glances of a Pigeon Kicker. The trailer here is under the reissue title, Pigeons. If you want to hear the sound of chutzpah, listen to this overwrought ad copy for the trailer narration. In 1969, it was Midnight Cowboy. In 1970, it was Five Easy Pieces. Each year, out of nowhere, without fanfare, one motion picture appears and rises above all others by the sheer force of its honesty, its accuracy. The movie for 1971 has been chosen. It is called Pigeons. Yeah, you know, actually not so much. Not even close, really. But hey, confidence in your product goes a long way, right? The story of the film's release is interesting. 
MGM acquired the film as a negative pickup, which means that the film was produced independently with MGM always in the wings to package, market, and distribute the film for a share of the profits. Well, after a few screenings in the fall of 1970, including engagements in New York and San Francisco, MGM ignominiously dumped the film. Their involvement with it was short-lived, thus making the poster I showed you a really rare item. A small company called Plaza Pictures bought it, re-released it in early 1971, and truncated both the title and the runtime. They pruned the film down by almost 20 minutes. The DVD out on the market from Scorpion is the abridged 87-minute cut. The version that MGM screened the previous fall was 106 minutes. You can kind of tell that certain scenes feel compromised and that some of the cuts in those scenes feel abrupt. Alas, that longer version of the film is likely lost forever. It did get some good reviews though. The trailer narrator rattles off some of them and cherry picks quotes from others that were in actuality a bit less kind. The novel on which the film was based, written by David Boyer, was set in Philadelphia. I've read it, it's fairly faithful to the film. It's the story of a Princeton grad who chucks his privilege and takes a job as a taxi driver, but I'd say it's less a razor's edge and more dinner theater, counterculture edition. The director here is John Dexter. He was British and one of the most prominent theater directors of the era, having first brought plays like Royal Hunt of the Sun and Equus to the stage. He was widely regarded as a giant of the theater, but he only made three films, none of which established him in the industry. Before this one there was The Virgin Soldiers, and after this one there was I Want What I Want, which was a very ahead of its time drama about the trials and tribulations of a trans woman. Like Dexter, many of the performers appearing in Pigeon Kicker were more known for their stage work than their film and television work. I have to admit that long before I laid eyes on the actual film, the sidelong glances of a Pigeon Kicker, this trailer did very much intrigue me. It was one of my holy grails when Scorpion finally put it out on disc in 2012. It's not a great film. Honestly, it kind of disappointed me. I think the character is rather obnoxious and a little bit irritating, but I've come to appreciate it as yet another vivid document of a lost New York and a lost time. I can say that the original MGM poster is one of my prized possessions.